welcome back to part 7 of the video series in today's video we are going to see how we can get the query depth the geothermal gradient as well as the heat flow in our last video that is a uh, video 6 we're able to know the longitude and latitude of each of the blocks and as well as we carry out the spectral analysis on each of the blocks and that is here what we have here from block 1 up to block 16 so this is the main part of the work actually we are going to do i'm going to do the first two b1 block 1 and block b2 that is what i'm going to do all the remaining ones i've done them i'm going to show you how i obtain from block 3 to block 16 that's why i leave block 1 and block 2 so that we can do it together and see as well let's go back to this paper that we are going to use let's go to the theoretical background at this equation 3 the spectral power which is p of k k is the wave number and as we know wave number is inversely proportional to wavelength when we have long when we have small wavelength when we have small wave number we have a bigger wavelength and that corresponds to deeper features so and that's what we we'll take note of the inverse related to each other so in the spectral analysis we we have a graph of lean of p at least natural log of p against the wave number k in order to get the the curie depth the thermal gradient as well as it flow we need to transform that data into this form that is we need to get a natural log of the square root of the spectral power then we plot the graph against that of the absolute value of the wave number then from this we say the upper band of the magnetism is zt that is it that is the depth to the top of the magnetic body can be extended by fitting a straight line through the i wave number that means that means shorter wavelength what we have and from that and, and from that line segment then we are able to get the slope the slope will be negative and since we are plotting the, the lean of square root of the spectral power then the slope which is negative we equate it to z of t that is the depth to the top of the magnetic source from there we get this similarly to get the depth to the centroid at z naught what we do we take the lower wave number part of the radial frequency like the, the, the long the lower the lower wave number part that is the short wavelength that's what we able to get the depth to the to, to, to the centroid so we plot a graph of the lean of the square root of the spectral power divided by the absolute value of the wave number then from the slope of the graph which is negative and the value of that slope which has the negative of z naught from there we're able to get the z naught which is the depth to the central then to get the, the curie depth which is z subscript b is going to be twice the depth to the central minus the depth to the source and from this we're able to get this now to get the geothermal gradient follow through this we're able to find out that uh, we take this one dt dz to be constant then we're able to arrive at this uh this is the material which is 580 degrees celsius minus ts and ts can be taken to be zero which is a surface temperature divided by zb and our zb is nothing but the curie depth which what we have then from the geothermal gradient we can I able to get the heat flow through the heat uh, through the through this equation equation 10 the value of the t the z which is the determined gradient by multiplying by this k and this k is a constant values uh, and that values to be around let me check the next paper it's supposed to be around uh, the next paper let's see so it's supposed to be 2.5 something Hmm, that is the value in this equation six in this equation the curie depth is inversely proportional to the heat flow 
according to these researchers. In this research, the kilo differential of this and thermal conductivity as, as an average igneous rocks was used as this because igneous that's where we actually target. So we take an average value of 2.5 watt per meter per degree Celsius. So by knowing the kilo depth, divide 580 by the kilo depth, you get the geothermal gradient, multiply the geothermal gradient by 2.5, we get the heat flow. And that's what we're going to do. So let's head over to this. So this is our K. This is the line of K. These two columns were obtained from the spectral analysis. You can see this is a K cycle per K unit. That is rad per kilometers. And um, this limp P, you can see as the, that is the spectral power which is under this column. So we need to copy these two columns and bring them here. So what we do, we come over here. Then we copy copy these values down to the edge then control c then we move up and then paste it paste the values center it then put border then let's take the lane of the natural log what we do here we take also co con we copy it to the edge then control c then we move here and then what we do we paste the values then center it then set, set the border now what we need is the spectral power since we know this we know for us to cancel to to, to, to for us to get the p of k from the lane we take the exponential because remember this start at zero we are going to have a problem if we want to divide divide this if, you see, if we're going to divide this and if k is zero and take the lean we're going to have an undefined value so that's why we're going to start from this second row yeah so this value so what we do say equals to we take exponential of this value of the lean of a value who we'll cancel the lean and give us the spectral power place enter then from this double click on this edge to autofill then center it then put border now this is the square root pk of square root to say equals to sqrt from bracket then pull this then close press enter then double click to autofill center it and pull this as we have then now we have the natural log that is ln natural log of the square root of the spectral power press enter then double click we are is down there then center it and press here so we have this and the next what we have in the next is uh let me check okay so the next is going to be natural log of the square root of spectral power which is this divide by the wave number k now we are going to have this then we come here then we double click center it and that's what we have we have this then let's put this one and that's how we transform this data so what we're going to do we're going to move this one to the side because we are going to do a plot here okay then save now let's just copy this two three rows control c and go to b let's paste them here let let's go back control c So let's do this one. So we're going to let's delete these values so that we can we have the values now. You can see everything is the exponential of this square root, then this idea. Now the same to do here, then we have hold this down, then we select this value down. Control C then paste these values. Then the that of natural log of the of the spectral power. 
control C then come here and then paste values as you can see they are now there then from here we press double click double click double click double click so now we have this so we now have this data now we are going to do the plotting so let's move this one here so these are the two things now we are going to plot now let me show you what we are going to see so this is what we are going to do so this is the spectral plot for block three block four which i've done block four block five block six block seven block eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen you can see the depth to the top and the depth to the to the central now let's see how we're able to get this let's start with the b1 from air or anywhere you can click and click insert click on this and click on this then center bring it here and expand it move it a little bit like so then right click on this select data click add give it any name let's call it spectral plot it's not it's not required spectral plot then under the, the value of x this is our value of x like i said this is where we start we'll copy this values column all of this portion then we'll, we'll come here and then click inside move out then move sc scroll up remember we want to plot a graph of uh, uh this lean of squ square root of a of the spectral power against k so our this column will be for y so select this part Then we'll press OK. Then now OK. Now you can see it has been selected. As you can see, these are the values on the Y and this is the value of the X. It's OK. So this is what we have. Now we need to look at this and look at the J1. And of course, these are noises around which you don't know. So in order to get, we are going to plot this against this one. We'll plot this against this. We will plot this the natural law of square root of the spectral power against this we look for the highway number part around this side we're going to look at if you can see that is steep slope this slope is more higher than compared to the slope we get here so the middle one here this is the part where we start because you can see from here to here this is not what we're interested in this is a smaller wave number then we have the bigger one here actually this is where we are, we are going to start from here then move to and take any other point because if you take any other point here it's still the same because this is also almost a straight line so we can take here or take here or take this point look at this point here and over it you see you write series spectral plot point this look at the the first coordinate 0 0.279 0 that is your value of k is 0 0.279 0 0.27 and come here at 0 0.27 that is the value where k is then i light this column up to this point then put i light color to be yellow then that is this point then let's take any other point let's say air it doesn't matter either air is, is going to be almost going to be the same so let me just take this point air this over it you see the value of k now is 0 0.717 0 0.717 and actually this is the point 0 0.717 then i light it give it a color so now this will not have so now let's go back to this curve right click select data remove then now let's call it p1 plot one and let's scroll up we we'll must take that portion from this part then We'll take the next one from this part to this part okay then add the next portion click inside series hex values then take the middle part this to this part then take the other part this to the part and click okay then 
then p3 the third part then click inside this scroll up then you take now from this part down to the edge to the last row then enter here then enter this value and from there you scroll up continue from this point downward and click ok then ok and scroll up to see the graph and this is the graph we have now let me expand this graph here now let's remove this uh this grid select click on it then press the delete key on the keyboard and press on this horizontal line press the delete key on the keyboard then now double click on this x axis then on the right click on this fill line fill and line then on the and arrow type you can see click and select this then set the color to be black now click on the y axis and arrow type as this set color to be black now let me expand it now let me remove the border around this double click on this the under border put no line now let's bring this portion this is the portion we need so right click on it let's now get the slope we say add trend line click on this display equation on chart then click on this back to format it solid line increase the width then the dash type take it to solid as you can see them click on this this at now is our as you can see this is now our low value we have okay you see the slope is minus 2.9015 the slope of this line and from this, I know to go that we cannot able to get our ZT, okay, which we are going to get. So what we do, let's let me first give us a title, then click on this, then come to the chart and design, click on this, then primary, then let's give it a wave number, wave number then rad per kilometer and rad per kilometer then select this so that we can increase the font size set it to 12 okay and the next thing now to do is for us to write text edit text I click on insert and text then here now let's type um let me change it to 14 it are called block block 1a now we'll bring it down to this portion So also let me insert the Z, then I'll click on this. Then L, I'll start insert, then put equation. Then I'll put Z. Let me click on this. Z, Z, T. It's equals to, now you can see because the ZT is negative of the slope and the slope is minus this so that will give me 2.9015 kilometer so let me just bold it so now this is what we'll click on it press backspace and we have deleted then bring this here so this is the depth to the top I remain that of the the, uh, the axis to label the axis so now let's label the axis the same thing here I'll come here and press text so insert equation equation I'll put um, lean lean of uh, p 
puis, euh, puis, let me put this in this, P of k to the power of 1 over 2, close bracket, so this is what we have. So move here, open this, then click on this, drag this down, then bring this up here. And let's click on this shape format, then uh, shape outline, no outline, shape fill, no fill. So we have this. So move this one down a bit. I think that is for the depth to the top of the anomaly. Now let's do the other one. So this is what we have. And the other one we're going to do, similar process of click here. Then put in search, graph this. So this one is faster than the other one. Click on this, then move it down. Then right click, select data, add, call it any name, spectral plot, select X. Now let's come back the same horizontal value, all this one, click to select, down, click to select down, then click this, click this, clean this value deleted value there then come here because now is this lean of uh lean of square root of spectral power divided by k then we we'll select all this last column now we'll press ok then press ok now this is what we have you can see it along y along x and similarly but this time around we are not after the middle layer, we will look at the small values of k, this around our k, so around um, this will be a, a, a i slope, got a steep slope, this is a gentle slope, so this will be around this point, so I can take either this stop here, I'll take this first 3, then I can over this, what I have here is 0 0.119, see I have 0 point, if you look over this, it will give me 0 point, 0 0.1 119 for x 0 0.119 0 0.119 that's the value 0 0.119 i like this up to this point change color to this now this what we then click on this again select data then remove then add and now we have only two parts p1 under the x under the x values select from this point to this point or the y select from this point to this point then click ok then add the second segment p2 under for the series of this we'll start from this we'll move down we down then move there then we'll move up to this point which will go down here you can see we have here so from this value they will click OK then OK so the similar way we are going to edit this delete delete click on this then click on this then an arrow key then give it the color black Click on the Y axis, the same thing, give it black. Now click on this, now on this blue, then add trend line, click display on equation, click on this to format it solid line, increase the width, this type to this. Then move this somewhere here. Now let's click outside. So that will remove the border, no line. And let's copy this. This part. 
control C, control V, or move it. sorry, control Z. Call it the B part. Then let's uh put click the level mm, primary wave number command K then in rad per kilometer which you have in rad per kilometer then click on this change the font size to twelve And now let's copy this. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Then change this one to Z naught. And also the slope here is going to be my the value of Z is going to be minus the slope. The slope here is minus this. So change this value now to be twenty three point three seven two. That is the depth to the center. Delete then delete then bring this value here. Then now let's see. Let's format it. Let's bring this one down. So we have this. Now we need to copy this. Well, let's edit it this time around what we have is going to be divide by k bring it here up here and that is it then click here then drag it then move this one here up a bit I think I think that is it click save now we have done with this. Now let's go to our result. Our block one the value of ZT is 2.9015. So our value of this and our value of uh, Z naught. Z naught is going to be. 23.372 23 23.272 23 so you see zb is twice you can see it twice the value of this the value of this that is b3 minus the value of this that is c3 that's why we have on the geothermal grid which is 580 degrees celsius divided by d3 which is the query depth then the heat flow is 2.5 multiplied by the value of the thermal grid, which is this. So this how is done. So the value of this is two times this minus this. The value of this is 580 divided by this. The value of this is two point. The value of this is 2.5 times multiplied by this. That's like what I have told you. So that is we have done for that of this. Now I remain the last one, which is B2. So now we have done for B1, which is this. So this is B1, which we have done, which now is this. Done for B1. So now I'm going to do the same thing for that of uh, B2. So stay on and let me do it while you watch.
Ctrl C then Ctrl V Ctrl C Ctrl V three point nine Select this part, then move down to the last row. Here is it. Click OK. Click OK. Let's scroll up. Now let's format graph. Remove this line. Format the horizontal axis. Click on this. And arrow type color black select the y axis color black uh, and arrow type this I click click remove the border as no line let's set the x axis axis titles uh, the, below the x axis below the x axis uh, with number okay, in red in red per kilo kilometer let me select it again a pop-up will show then select 12 font size of 12 move it upward then copy this and bring it here and paste and rename it as B okay now then just click on this blue add trend line click on display then click on this to format a solid line increase the width dash type solid click here let me move this one down Let's go back to V1. 
let's copy this then bring it here and paste let's copy this number here that is a slope to 26 26.362 kilometer click on it place the backspace click again backspace And let's bring the label on the y axis. Okay. I think that's it. Z not. And let's uh, move this one down a bit. I think that then. Now let's align these two together. Move them together like this. Perfect. Same thing there is it. Click save. Close this part. So now we have the two for block two. Now let's enter the values. For Z naught is 26, 36 to 26, 36 to 26, 6, 3, 3, 2. Let me check. Let me check uh, 362, 362, 362, then lastly 39807, 9807, let's check, let's double check, 98073, okay, that's it. So at least that is it we have done for all the blocks. Let's click save block one. We have see how the block two. We're able to get the top depth to the top, depth to the bottom. B3, which I've also done in the rest. Now let's go to the results table. So this is what we have in the result table. This are the depth to the central depth to the top. Kiri depth, your thermal gradient then it flow now let's get the average under this column click equals to and type average those brackets then you copy i'll copy all this select all this then press enter average i'm sorry and this is the average And this is going to be average, average, if you copy all these values, close bracket, average value, and this goes to average, open bracket, select all these to the last, in this and press this double click average okay double click average yes double click average so the average depth is 42.7 kilometers the average geothermal gradient is 14.2 degrees celsius per kilometer and this average heat flow is 35.53025 milliwatt per meter square this is what we have now let's go to the tab table we have done in the previous video now we are going to copy these values and fill them down here let's go to our excel values let's copy the query depth copy this first column ctrl c come here so a z naught copy all this then paste just then let's go back to our ZT, Control C, and go back. Select this, then Control V to paste. Then lastly, this column. Control C, then move out there. Then from there, you paste.
paste then the last two column add your tamar gradient control c go out there and paste Then lastly, the last column, Ctrl C, Ctrl C, go back here and then copy this value, then paste, then save, and let's come here and click add this column, let's select all these three up to this, Um, right click match cell set this to this average and bold it and let's copy the average here let's copy this average control c so this so far what we have so this what we have so we have carried out now the spectral analysis as well as estimation the depth to the query depth your thermal gradient as well as the heat flow from the spectral analysis of all the blocks 1 to 16 and this is the summary that is calculated average query depth the zb your thermal gradient the scolum and the heat flow from this we see the average value of this so in the next video, we are going to see how we can now able to come up with the three maps, the query depth map, geothermal the gradient map, as well as the heat flow map. And that's how is is obtained. The lead rules. So now, uh, spectral plots. So let's now all the spectral plot here. Yeah? Okay, we can now bring them here. Let's see, and this, and that is what we have. Here. You can see this is the average we got. You can compare with other work of other researchers. What do they have as an average? It's basically able to get um, the result indicate that the average query point depth with the study area is this, followed by the average geothermal gradient of this and an average heat flow of this. So you can see from their own findings, you can able to compare and construct. Okay, the heat flow ranges from this to that with an mean value of this. The thermal gradient ranges from this to this with a mean value of this and it flow ranges from this to this with a mean value of this so that's how to able to carry out the to calculate the query depth your thermal gradient as well as the heat flow and let's take out to bring in our plot here let's go back to excel let's start with b1 all you need to do is to if you have, if you have windows press snip snip tool then click this then place this then click on this rectangle then start from the edge here yeah. then you screw and move right and gradually come down to you select the old stuff i think yeah it's okay then let it go then control control s and go to our project images uh, let's go to folder here yeah. spectral plot folders inside this one call it uh, block one click save then again we minimize we go to the next block we'll come back here yeah. they will say new click on this then we'll come here and do the same thing here as you can see it's cut okay so like this you can leave it like this or if you like you can crop 
uh, the crop uh, is the crop value of crop you can move it down and crop the edge so, then save then click s then you call it black black 2 save then minimize come to 3 come to 3 same thing and this Okay, you can place the eraser. Mm, let me see. Okay, let's click save. Can you like that? Then block block 3 i think that's all i can just stop here but but, but you, you get the method how to do it so you can just take a screenshot and then save it for all the other ones from there now you can now go back to this go back to our folder project one and i press montage images Right, we save it. So, so I'm coming. Let me see. I didn't know where do I actually save it, but uh, let me take that off one again. Snip tool. Snip tool again. it off then okay save block one so this is what we have then click save then we can now do this one copy then go to our word, then paste. So you can see, you can do it for the, all the remaining one, and so on. So that is all for this video. In the next video, we are going to use sofa software in order to plot the map for Kiru depth, geothermal gradient, and heat flow. See you in the next video. Thank you.